Right, welcome to this presentation about JITEC. JITEC is a just-in-time tool for architecture consistency. Um, and this is a contribution by Cal State University to D4.6 deliverable under the revamp project. In the video, we'll be looking at how JITEC can be used by software architects. Um, Specifically, we'll see how the two facilitates module dependency analysis for single systems as well as for family of variants in a product line. Um, the module dependency we're talking about is at, at an architectural level. Uh, again, within the architecture, we'll see how the two can be used to facilitate feature dependency analysis, um, how the two can be used to view dependency metrics in the architecture, as well as how we can act as a mapping tool. Now, the JTEC contribution to revamp is uh, provided by the Squad Research Group. Uh, that's the Software Quality and Digital Modernization uh, Research Group under the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science at Cal State University. And the group has three main focus areas. Um, we look at design and evolution of security and privacy critical systems, um, quality assurance techniques, um, like testing for long living systems, but specifically uh, in relation to um, the revamp project is the detection of and mitigation against software architecture degradation and other forms of technical debt, both in single systems and a family of variants. So more on the tool. So the tool is an Eclipse-based plugin that helps check the consistency between a software's architectural design and its implementation. So when we have a software architecture, as well as its source code base, we can use the tool to check is the actual existing source code or implementation consistent with how the software was, in, was designed uh, to be. Um, it was originally developed as an open source tool by Lero, that's the Irish Software Research Center at the University of Limerick. Uh, with the two, we can detect architecture violations, um, as mentioned before. Uh, and the technique it uses is based on reflection modeling. And the two is able to prompt the developer architect to um, act, act accordingly based on these violations. It's also able to give programmers real-time feedback on architecture violations, as we'll see. Um, as a programmer uh, is working on a system, he or she might introduce uh, some core relationship that violates the architecture and they can see this instantly. Thus, it's able to increase a programmer's architectural awareness in a timely manner, which will lessen the likelihood of violations um, as they're introduced into the code base. I must mention, though, that the GTAC works with Java code base, but there are plans to extend it to work with other languages like C, C++, and more. So how is the tool used? So Squad uses the tool, as we mentioned before, for software architecture degradation research. Um, it uses this for module dependency analysis and feature dependency analysis for single systems and software product lines at an architectural level, as well as to generate software dependency metrics and for a software code based to architecture mapping. If you're interested in this sort of research, especially as an industry partner, um, you would do well to contact us uh, following the link below and would love to hear from you and how to see how we can help you. 
So let's have a demo of what the two can actually do. So I have here an Eclipse environment pre-installed with JTAC. And on my left, I have a Java-based project called Apple Defense. Apple Defense is one of many or a family of games called the Apple Games. And so to get started, I would want to create in my project a JTAC file, an architecture model. So if you have JTAC installed, you should be able to select that an architecture model and say we can call it Apple Defense Architecture and it creates Apple Defense Architecture.exam file and so I have a space here uh, where I can build an architecture so we were in touch with the original developer and he uh, explained to us what the intended architecture was for Apple Defense so I can then build some modules or components whichever you want to call it and let's say it has a GUI module and all parts of the program that are related to the GUI um, classes packages would fall under there and say I have another component and it's called uh, yeah, what he, he told us we have entity and I have a third uh, that we can call help. So each of these represents a subcomponent or module, submodule of the entire program. And then I can represent the relationships that uh, the program should have between. So let's say um, we can have dependencies from GUI to entity. We can have dependencies from GUI to the help module, dependencies from the entity to the help module, and dependencies from the entity module to the GUI module. So obviously a connection or relationship between uh, two modules or components is directional. And currently you can see numbers. This represents the number of dependencies that can exist uh, between, or that exists rather between uh, mappings so at this stage with the dotted lines it tells us that um, well there are no dependencies and that's because we haven't done any mapping I can then come to my uh, code base and I can do a mapping of the source code to the entity so I have an outline here on the right that shows my modules and I can drag and say, okay, Apple Defense button is part of the GUI module. Um, I can say Apple Defense Constant and Apple Defense Constant Original are part of the Entity module. Um, yeah, and I can go on and on and I can take a whole... Uh, package as well and drop it here uh, to give you uh, some mappings and so the more I, I keep doing that so eventually the arch architecture gets updated showing um, the dependencies that actually exist in the implementation uh, do they conform or do they diverge um, from or what was intended so for example we did say that the architecture allows dependencies between GUI and entity and entity and GUI and does show the number that exists seven from GUI to entity and 653 in the opposite direction. This is an allowed dependency, but none exist. We did say the dependency can exist from entity to help and they are there in the implementation, six of them. But what it also shows is that there are 20 dependencies from help to entity, which are actually violating um, the architecture because uh, in our architecture, we said 
that none should exist. So this is what the tool helps you to do. Um, uh, it helps you to see uh, whether your implementation conforms to the architecture. Now I have a complete version of what Apple Defense looks like um, here so that we don't have to go through this um, in more detail. So you can see I have a complete mapping uh, here and it shows us um, that there are some violations, uh, quite a number actually, especially in the case of logic to help. Um, the intended architecture did not intend for uh, this dependency to occur, but we have almost 2,500 violations uh, in this case. Uh, so we can also use the tool now to view uh, features. So if you have embedded features in your source code uh, using, currently we're able to view, check for features using uh, feature annotation. Um, so we can then be able to see what features exist. So a quick way to, I already have the source code annotated um, and I can order a rebuild so we can see uh, what this looks like. So, so I'm able to see um, using different views here, I can see the feature distribution per component. So I can see in logic what features exist um, in the logic module and how many resources contain this feature. And I can see that GUI has none and help has a couple. So I should make a disclaimer that these were just features we embedded to show uh, um, how the tool works, but these aren't the actual official features that were contained uh, in Apple Defense. Uh, we can also see reference lists. Uh, the reference list shows us um, in a connection or in a dependency between modules, what sources uh, do the dependencies originate from, what type they are, so it could be access, assignment, uh, a call, uh, and about three others, uh, we're able to see the target uh, and what resource it is. We're also be able to see um, the feature dependency in a table that shows the from what feature and to which feature and how many dependencies exist. Um, for the feature dependency, we also have um, a visualization that you can view um, and maybe it'll be easier if I move that there. Oh, oops, my picture is missing a bit, but with the two, you're able to see what feature dependencies exist amongst uh, different connections to modules. So I can see that, okay, what exists between GUI and help. So in this case, I have no feature dependencies. I could select what exists between from help to GUI in that direction. And I can see that actually um, there is a feature dependency. There exists in the end help module, a feature called levels and in the entity module, a feature called Entity Properties, and there is one dependency between these two features. Uh, let's try between help and logic. So I can see between logic and help that logic has three features, namely game wave, levels, and game options. And help has 
two features, game constant versions and game constant version one. And we can see how the features in logic and features in help relate in that game wave levels and some of the dependencies in game options go to game constants version two and game options goes purely to game constants version one. And I can also see how many of each of these. So this can help with analysis of your feature dependencies. Um, you see if your implementation is violating feature dependencies or is conforming to um, how your feature dependencies apply. And we get some metrics on in terms of numbers on how these occur. So um, this is a very brief video, um, but it just shows uh, some of uh, the things that Jita can do. A few things have been left out, like we can, for example, load features as a CSV file. So if we have a tool that can uh, give feature location information, uh, we can integrate it or into um, our module by importing the CSV file. Um, alternatively, if we have a, a tool within the Eclipse environment that's able to annotate feature locations in your source code, they're using uh, f comments as a feature annotation, then GTEC is able to pick these up, um, as I had shown, as was the case for this example that I had already gone through the source code and annotated it with features. And during the build process, uh, GTEC is able to pick these up automatically and uh, give feature dependency information. In summary, uh, this two, the GTEC tool can be used uh, for your software architecture degradation and consistency checking, for module feature dependency analysis uh, as code-based architecture mapping, or for software dependency metrics generation. And just so if you're interested in uh, this sort of uh, research or industrial partners interested in case studies, uh, please feel free to contact uh, the squad research group at Cal State University, and you can follow the links and use the emails. Thank you for your time and for listening.